This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, DJ Python Hyena. And uh, I have a wonderful guest for you uh, today. Um, we're going to go back to summer camp, and we're going to talk about a film that came out in 1979 called Meatballs, among other things. But we're going to talk to one of the stars of that film, uh, the very lovely, the very beautiful, the very talented. Please welcome Christine DeBell. Hi, Christine. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Well, it's almost afternoon here. <laughs> it's, oh, it's true. It, it's 1130 here. Oh, it, that's funny. Yeah. Well, um... Yeah, you. Uh, I almost feel almost like I know you. We talked on Twitter quite a bit back and forth. This is our first verbal exchange. Yes, it is. Yes. So uh, I'm going to start off by talking about Meatballs, because that's where I kind of discovered you, and that's uh, probably the film that you're most famous for. Um, how, how did you get the part for that? Um, I just auditioned you know it's just that's sort of how it works you know when you're because I was really just starting out then and um it wasn't like um they were sending me scripts I just went to an audition and um got a call back and got the part yeah, that was shot up here in Canada. I've never been to, so that was in Ontario, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I've I've never really been outside New Brunswick. I just been kind of sheltered here, so I I don't get too many places, but um anyway, that that of course um was Bill Murray's. What's that? No, I was going to say it was shot at a camp um north of Toronto. Yeah. An actual camp, yeah. Is that camp still open today? I don't know. Maybe. Did you? I used, don't know. Did you used to go to summer camp when you were a little girl? No, I grew up on a farm. We didn't. I grew up at a camp. <laughs> oh. So, you know, when you grow up in the country, it seems to me that people that go to camp, I mean, I could be mistaken, but most people who go to camp are people who grow up in the city. And I grew up in the country. I did go to art camp once, a small art camp um, for a few weeks. But, you know, growing up in the country, there was always something to do. I actually have lived in the country all my life. I live out in what they call the boonies. Yeah, that's sort of where I grew up, yeah. You have a lot of farm. What, what kind of animals did you have in your farm? It, it was a self-sufficient farm. We had all kinds of animals, horses, um, which we rode, and then animals that we raised for food and vegetable garden and did a lot of canning and, you know, basically a self-sufficient farm. Do you have any special pets? Pet? Oh, did I have a pet? Yeah, like any um, special pets on the farm? Um, no, we just had... I mean, I had a horse and we had a dog, but my sisters were, were like, one. my younger twin sisters were like Dr. Doolittle. They were always having, I think at one point we had a spider monkey. They raised, you know, wild raccoons and they'd find baby animals everywhere and sort of bring them into the house and take care of them. So it was a bit of a menagerie. You got twin sisters? I have, yeah, sisters that are twins, yeah. They couldn't make another one of you. They broke the mold when they made you. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> you. So uh, what was the experience like um, working on Meatballs? It was, it, it was really wonderful, right? And I think um, my first experience with um, a lot of improvisation, I mean, you, you study it, but putting it into... Um, applying it and, you know, looking back at how comedies were made, I think with Second City and then um, Saturday Night Live and Bill Murray and all those guys, I mean, it, they redefined how comedies were made. And, and and starting with Animal House and then Meatballs was a part of that revolution, I think. 
what was it like working with Bill Murray? Um, it was it, it was great. You know, he um, he was really exactly how he seemed in the film. He was funny, wonderful, charming, um, a genius. They were saying that uh, they didn't even know whether he was going to show up the first day. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. He still has that sort of, <laughs> you know, aura about him, right? Well, Howard Stern just interviewed him last year, and, and he was kind of a mystery uh, guest, and Howard kind of announced him on the fly, because, you know, you never know when he's going to be in or if he's not, so he waited right till the spur of the moment, I think. Right, yeah. I mean, I mean there are some... There's a story that he doesn't even have a telephone or he doesn't have an agent. I mean, he has this random phone number. If you have a project, you call something. I mean, I've heard these wild stories about him, but. Yeah, um, I've seen stuff online. Did you ever notice he shows up at random house parties? Did you ever see that? Yeah, I guess I've heard that as well, yeah. I've actually seen stuff like that online. I'm like, wow. Like, uh, He's a nutty guy. He's nutty. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think most brilliant people are, right? They're just a little, there's something, yeah. What did you think when he did Lost in Translation? Did you see that film? Yes. Yeah, he was amazing in that film. And it was, it was so terrific to see him transition from, you know, being the funny guy to... Because, you know, I think many actors that can do the kind of comedy he does are, you know, they're, you know, brilliant actors. And and it was awesome to see him do, you know, something that wasn't a comedy, right? I mean, he had done them before, but I mean, Lost in Translation was really terrific. Yeah, he went from that to Broken Flowers, and he did some famous now for the Wes Anderson films, and he's done really well in those. And it's been great mm-hmm. kind of seeing him grow like that as an actor. Yeah, yeah. And he got nominated for an Oscar for Lost in Translation, so that was a, I know an awesome move on uh, his part. So yeah, yeah. so um, you of course you played a camp counselor, A L. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What you're did ask they? What it stands for? I knew it. What's that? <laughs> you, you're going to ask. You're going to ask me what it stands for. Yeah. A-L. What is that? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. It stands for whatever you'd like it to stand for. Alice, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Angie, Angie. Um, oh, I can't even think. Yeah. People always ask me that. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't. Allie. You weren't. Mar- you weren't wearing any makeup in that film, were you? Mm, nope. No. So you're a naturally beautiful woman. That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, I don't know how to respond to that. I, I um, I think maybe I had mascara on. I don't know. I'd have to look closely. I remember watching the movie, and I was more distracted by you than I was Bill Murray. So how's that for you? Well, that can happen. I mean, you're a guy. Yeah, I'm a guy. Got yeah. good taste. I've been told that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. There you go. But um, it was called the uh, Animal House goes to summer camp, and and. Um, I think one of the things I noticed between the two is that Animal House was very, very, very raunchy. You know, you got like John Belushi watching the pillow fight and whatnot. I I didn't find... What's that? That would have been my take on it. I mean, I don't think in in any way that Meatballs was... I mean, Animal House was raunchy, and I don't... And Meatballs was, you know, sort of uh, sweet by comparison. Yeah, very, very tame, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes I wonder if they if they might have gone the opposite route with the um, I can't think of the actor that played the kid uh, Rapace. What what's his name? Oh, Chris Makepeace. Oh, that's okay. Okay, yeah, he was my bodyguard. Um, he mm-hmm. um, 
I might have gone the opposite uh, route with him and maybe make him more of a rebel if I had done the script for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might have gone that route, but... but, um, Well, it would have given the film an entirely different feel, right? Yeah. Um, Well, some of my favorite stuff, and it was the stuff um, where Keith Knight and um, uh, Spaz there were, after their hijinks, they're like hiding under the cabin and whatnot, and they stuck his underwear up on the flagpole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's just, uh, for the time, it just, I think someone posted it. You brought up my Twitter um, fan page, the Twitter feed. Um, someone posted that it was rated top second of all of best summer camp films. What was number I don't know one? I saw that. No, I didn't mm-hmm. see that. What was number one? Do you know? No, I didn't. I didn't. Let's take a look, shall we? I did look, but I don't remember actually what um, what number one was. Maybe I don't remember. Oh. No, obviously I don't remember. But I'm thinking that I didn't know the film well. Well, I know Paramount did uh, Meatballs, and I know the year after they did Friday the 13th, which is a very opposite end uh, camp uh, camp movie. Right, yeah. yeah. But um, we just talked about Keith Knight. Keith Knight no longer with us. He's passed away. Did you know he was gone? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I just had Lisa Langles on here um, about a month ago, and... Um, I was doing a retrospect on the movie Class of 1984, which she was in and Keith Knight was in. And uh, I talked about what an interesting um, transition, him going from the sweet guy in, um, cl- in uh, Meatballs to this this um, uh, member of this gang in Class of 1984. I think he was a very underrated actor. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. No, he yeah, he was a terrific actor. Number one is Wet Hot American Summer. That's I've, why I don't recognize the film. Yeah, I've heard of it and I haven't seen it. Um, I don't even know when that came out. But I, yeah, me. Hang on. It doesn't say. It says you can see it on Netflix. <laughs> you know what? I so. don't even have Netflix. No. Uh, uh, you, you've obviously got Netflix seems to be uh, killing the video stores because we just lost our last video store uh, this past year. Yeah, it was tr- yeah, it's just so odd, right? All video stores. Where was I recently? And I saw a video store and I was like, wow, they have a video store here? I mean, it's, it's, they're difficult to find now. They're very difficult. We had Jumbo Video and that was the last one to, to go under. And even the theater chains... Uh, seem to be uh, less and less people showing up. And um, I I would say part of that is Netflix and part of that is the quality of a lot of the movies playing, you know? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just, it, I mean, it, it takes a lot to get people to go. I mean, sometimes, you know, when the economy was bad, it was the price of the film as well. I mean, you can, why would you go spend $13 or something to see a movie when you can, you know, watch it on your wait till it comes to video or on your on your Netflix or Netflix. Yeah. Actually right now set up home. I actually don't have um I've got a television but I don't have um I only got it set up to play my movies on Blu-ray. When I'm home that's all I want to do is just watch my movies. So um my brother's got you Netflix. The, you watch the same movies over and over and over again? I've got about 200 movies, so what I do, I got like a 20-sided dice, and I'll toss that, and when I, um, whatever I come to, I'll watch that movie, and then I'll remember where I was after that, and when next time I watch a movie, um, I'll toss the dice again, and uh, I'll go up through, and whatever movie's up, I get them in uh, chronological order, so... I'll go up and I'll watch the next thing from that. But I got, like I said, I got one well, of those twenty-sided dice, so it can jump spontaneously all over the place. So, and it helps. Wow. Yeah, it helps me, um, babe, to watch my movies with while well, keeping it interesting. And uh, like I said, I got about two hundred movies home, so it's not a matter of me getting bored. And if something happens to uh, catch my attention that I want to see, sometimes I, you can find the movies on YouTube. 
and uh and if I want to see something bad enough, I'll uh, see if somehow I can locate it. But uh, I've got Meatballs Home on Blu-ray. Right. Yeah, I remember when that came out on Blu-ray. It was great. Well, but but you but also you know HBO on demand all the you know all the all the premium channels they have you know their movies that they have movies as well. I mean you can I don't know I I don't often go back and watch and. I mean, sometimes if it's on television, but I don't. I'm not a big collector of movies anymore. I have them, obviously, but I don't watch them. I like watching new movies. Yeah, I a lot of the new movies don't have as much story anymore. This is true, and 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 to go back to what you were talking about earlier is that that's so why I think you know Marvel has taken over oh, yeah. the theaters. You know, it's, it's because they it's, they want to make blockbusters to get people into the uh well not just marvel obviously well i was a month before i uh reviewed um the avengers age of ultron you know and i thought it was an entertaining movie but i usually am more interested in the smaller movies like for instance ant-man is out right now but i think i'm more interested in train wreck right because it's a judd yeah yeah. because it's a judd apatow movie you know but um, mm-hmm. that's generally how I go about it. Or I'd be interested in something like Ex Machina, which I'm surprised we got. Like, we got this 10-screen uh, Cineplex here, but but we'll have a movie come out on four screens, and it just makes me pull my hair out because there'd be movies I'd want to see, and then we'd not get them. And I'm like, what's the point of having 10 screens, you know? Right, right. No, I, I understand completely. Yeah. They so, were here as well. Yeah. So, um what was it like working with Ivan Reitman, the director of Meatballs? Yeah, he, um, you know, it was obviously his first time, and uh, I think um, he, um, it, it's my understanding that he um, was, well, because it was talked about, I just was in Toronto um, last year for a uh, um, a 35th anniversary fundraiser for, was for Hunger for Change, I think, was the um, was the nonprofit they were raising money for, and Chris was there. Ivan couldn't be there because um, he was prepping a film in Europe. Danny Goldberg was there, but it, you know, it was talked about how he was um, <laughs> upset a lot because he was, you know, trying to, you know, it was his first film, trying to be under budget and dealing with Bill craziness, and you know, Bill crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, okay. Here's the scene. It's like it's almost like in that opening scene where he stands in front of the trash and says, "Here are the rules," and rips them up if you'd like to. <laughs> you can read them. <laughs> so, you know, I was watching so I think his first experience was quite. You know, it's probably like holy crap, but but he, yeah, he's a great. He's the greatest guy. It's wonderful, and, and the, whole, the entire experience was wonderful. I was watching the movie. Getting sick. Yeah. You got sick? Well, yeah. I mean, oftentimes when people meet me there, they their first comment is your your voice isn't as as deep as I thought it would be, and that's because I mean, obviously, um, the, it was filmed at a real camp um, in the beginning. That I think late August, the campers were still there, and but then it went on into September, and so it was really really cold there, and I just had a terrible cold in that scene. Uh, with um, wheels where I, you know, I'm sick in bed or, or I'm in the heat. You know, I don't go to the party. I mean, I forget actually why, I don't, whatever. But my voice is, you know, scratchy and, yeah, I was sick. Yeah, you guys were dining over potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I um... And both of they were very, very good. Yeah. I um, was watching the movie Kingpin, and uh, the Farrelly brothers were talking about Bill Murray, who had a small part in that movie. They said that he would look at the script, and he'd more or less just toss it away and do his own thing. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you. There you go. So they just confirmed it. Yep. Although I I don't know whether that curly hair he had in that film was his idea or not. (laughs) But I heard he did bowl a, um, the, he did his actual bowling in the film, I guess. So uh, there you go. 
well. Bowling you is not, you know, it's not life threatening. There you go. <laughs> So what do you think after all these years about the success and popularity of meatballs? Are you overwhelmed by that? Um, Well, I wasn't expecting it, really, you know. Um, I mean, you you sort of never know, right, what film you're going to do that will... Well, I just didn't think about it. You know, it's back in the day. I was very young, and you have a job, and you do the job, and then... You go on to the next one, and then on to the next, and on to the next. And then, you know, years later, um, I started going to um, these signings, um, autograph signings. And, you know, people were lined up and coming dressed in character and, as we thought. And it was just like, whoa, you know. This one fellow said, which was so interesting, um, I pick my friends. Uh, that's how I pick my friends. Is that is that if they love meatballs, then I'll be their friend. If they don't, then I can't be friends with them. It's like what? <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know. Well, obviously, now, yeah. What was you no, saying? I was just gonna say, but now I do. Okay. Well, obviously, I'm pretty smitten. I thought you were very beautiful in the film, and I think I'm not gonna give your age out, but I still think you look stunning. What's that? I'm 60. Okay, you're the same age as Howard Stern. You were born I look the same. Than him. He How, does, though. I look, I look a little better than. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> you were born the same year my favorite Alfred Hitchcock film came out, Rear Window. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That I mean, was, I've seen it. It's a great film. Great film, and uh, On the Waterfront came out that year, too. Marlon Brando. That was 1954. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I didn't come out until 1972, and that was the year Fritz the Cat came out. So dirty stuff was happening the year I was born. <laughs> 72, 72, I graduated from high school. Yeah? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that was the year of The Godfather, Cabaret, and then uh, What's Up, Doc? And then, uh, and then I look at all the, um, the dirty stuff that came out. Fritz the Cat, Pink Flamingos. <laughs> I'm like, what was going on the year I was born? <laughs> <laughs> it was a sexual revolution. I guess Marilyn Chambers was in. Um, there was a be- behind the green door or something like that. I think that was that year, and I didn't see that. But, but um, well, you were a baby. There you go. But um, you, should, you should not have seen it. Probably not. Oh, well, I saw. P- if your parents had taken you to see it, you, we would have questioned them. Well, I, I, I saw um, Fritz the Cat years later, and I kind of enjoyed it, but a twisted cartoon. But Pink Flamingos, I'm still trying to get rid of the memory. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen those, so I don't know. I can't uh, speak to the whether, uh, well, whatever. I haven't seen them. But um, as I said, I, I'm, for your age, 60 years old, I still think you're stunning. And I was wondering what advice you have for women out there uh, how you keep yourself up yikes the, well um, I mean obviously some of it is just the gene pool right um, and I just got incredibly lucky but um, other than that I don't really drink or smoke um, I exercise daily um, do a lot of yoga Pilates and have for since I was in my 20s. Um, so, so there you go. Walk a mile every day. Push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. You've, a- like you've aged better than Bill. <laughs> yeah, okay. But still, it's a gene pool. I, you know, I just got really lucky. My mother looked, um, you know, much younger. And she, she still, you know, um, for many years, she looked 10 years or more younger than she is, and yeah, I, I, I got lucky. I got lucky in the gene lottery. There you go. Well, um, before, um, like, I thought that Meatballs was your first movie, and I actually I remember one time I was watching Meatballs, and I kind of looked you up online, and I didn't realize it was not your first. Um, you had done Alice in Wonderland, um, the adult musical comedy. Uh, what was your experience yep. like on that? Um, 
Well, it, you know, I mean, obviously I kind of, they were keeping it, I didn't know what I was getting into. They, they, um, you know, it's like Peter Max did the music. He didn't know what he was doing in the music for, but, um, I, uh, I guess I said it once, but, you know, I was sort of young and obviously naive, but also kind of a wild kid in, in a, not incredibly wild, right? But it's just like, it was like, oh, okay, so this is what it is. And then I, it's what? <laughs> and then I was like, well, I could do this maybe, but I, I'm not doing that and I'm not doing that. You know, that's, and also I think that maybe they had decided to make some sort of, you know, an X-rated film. And then once they started to see the dailies, they were like, wow, this movie is going to, is you know, better than we thought it would be, or it's going to be terrific, and they changed their minds, and so we ended up making, you know, it was basically what you could see on HBO right now, it's, a, you know, could have been, I mean, they cut out like 13 seconds for an R rating, or a couple of minutes for an R rating, it's, it was really a pretty tame, and then um, a couple of years later, they came out with which I didn't even know I was off and running making other films and I wasn't paying attention and they came out with triple X version didn't even actually know about that or maybe I did and I there was I mean obviously there wasn't much I could do but um you know they added all that stuff so that they could have it be and everyone's like oh wow you were in this triple X movie it's like uh mm, no not really <laughs> I was not in a triple X movie but whatever yeah so. I I finally saw the movie. I have to say you were the best part of it. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's just a, it's a cute film and it's really not that bad. I mean, I, I, I had only seen the R version, um, which you can't even find now, I guess, but um, it, it wasn't like most. I mean, it hadn't been done before, right? So it's sort of, um, in a way, it's, people have said that it was iconic for the time you know, to make a, that type of film into a musical. And it was, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a, I, I guess I can't say it's a cute movie because I just said that about me. <laughs> so it's kind of odd to say it about, but it was for the time it was, um, okay, whatever. I don't know what to say about it. Well, I, when I watched it, I was like, "So this, so before A A L went to camp, she went to Wonderland." <laughs> yeah, right. There exactly. You. But they I had was in Wonderland. You they had you all done up, and I thought, well, I thought you looked beautiful without makeup, but that you were stunning. And you oh. did you did, did some singing in it. I remember you yeah, in the library. Not, that's not me. That's not me. You didn't sing. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I, I was a singer. I mean, I studied voice for years, and I was a singer. But obviously, when they're casting for a secret porno in New York, and, uh, um, or, you know, I mean, that's a joke. But, you know, they don't think that they're going to find a girl that can sing in that, look in, searching in that genre. So they had pre-recorded that woman's voice. So oh. I was just lip-syncing. Oh, and here I thought it was you. Oh yeah, it says it all over the internet. It has me on the soundtrack, and it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. It also <laughs> says I'm a, I was a Playboy bunny. It's like, <laughs> what? It's like people that can put anything on the internet, right? They, it's you know, you, you're not, you don't have to research. You you told me on Twitter that you weren't a Playboy bunny. You. That's what I mean. I wasn't. Yeah, and but so they that's... they actually had you on one of the covers from and the cover. Well, with... yeah, but that. Yeah, that's a cover. That's like a modeling job. That's not being a bunny. Now, why would are... why would they not have you be a bunny? I think you're prettier well, than most I, of the girls. Because, because I was an actor, that's why, and a model. And bunnies are, I don't even know what bunnies were. But aren't bunnies that like play, we used to have playboy clubs and bunnies would walk around in little bunny costumes? I mean, they were, they were waitresses in dress in uh, bunny costumes, is I believe what a bunny was. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. And, you know, so I was not a bunny. Oh. 
Well, nor, um, was I a, nor was I a centerfold. That's another thing that's on the internet. Oh, you know, Christine DeBell, Playboy centerfold. It's like, what? Oh. It's not a centerfold. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's easy for people to get that mixed up, but um, okay. Well, like I said, if someone researches, which is not a prereq on the internet, it's like you can just sort of, that's why kids are taught never to use it as a uh, as a research tool because most of the stuff that's on there is not actually true. Well, you know, um, when you were... Um... When you tweeted me the other night about the time to uh, what, that um, for us to talk, you know what I was doing while you were uh, as I got your message. No, I was on the computer watching a group of cheerleaders go wild on a school bus. Yeah, cheer, cheerleaders wild weekend. I was That's watching so a couple of your movies when you messaged me. Wow, the irony! Yeah, I That's was watching. Wa- yeah, they were they were on the bus there. This was before the bus driver got off, and and uh, you guys were arguing with the other cheerleaders. And w- I've never seen that movie before. And sometimes, like I said, sometimes you gotta go on YouTube to find stuff, and sometimes you can find full movies on there. And and um, I watched two of your movies on there to to prep more. What was for- the other? What was the other one? Okay, I'll talk about the other one first because uh, it goes under like two names. Uh, sometimes they call it the Big Brawl, or sometimes they call it Battle Brawl Battle Creek. Creek. Yeah, <laughs> Battle yeah, Creek Battle Brawl. Creek. Well, let's just go back to the other one because that was first. It, I mean, it was pretty mo- soon after Alice it was done by Kaleidoscope Films. Um, the- uh, cheerleaders. Yeah, that one's under two names as well. Sometimes they call it the All Girl um, Robbery, the Great American Girl Robbery. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that was sort of um, one of my first um, films after Alice, and so they were. It was like a like going to be a late night, which they had back then a late night T and A movie. They were called, you know, after midnight with a, and um, I just and I was, you know, after my experience with Alice, I said, well, I, I won't be doing that though. So, so I'm actually the only girl in the film that doesn't bare her breasts, but um, but yeah, it was a cute movie. I think I, I did um, some commentary for the um, for a re-release of it, and somebody said it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'd never done that before. Where you sit in a in a video room with earphones on and watch the movie. I hadn't seen it in all these years, and I'm watching it and laughing about stuff. I honestly, I don't, I don't think I, I remembered that much about it, but it, they said it was pretty hilarious. Someone mentioned at some point that they had seen the the commentary, um, but but then you know moving over to um, the big brawl that was awesome. I'd actually um, been in a car accident and I'd been I'd auditioned to you know Robert Klaus was the director and I had auditioned and they wanted me and I was um, in a car accident. And um, they waited for my face to heal before for filming, so that was pretty awesome. You know, I mean, oftentimes they could—I mean, they certainly could have just said recast the part, and it was great working with Jackie Chan. It was his first American film. What was he? Well, the- most, yeah. Well, no, I was going to say that most most of the my time on set and in the evenings, it was like we'd have dinner, and then it was working on lines, trying to <laughs> help him with his accent. She hasn't changed much. No, <laughs> although he still gets into accidents. I show those outtakes, and <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he did all of his own stunts. He's amazing. He's an amazing athlete. He's a great guy, a really terrific guy, very sweet. Well, one of the things I like about him is he's his action is not mean spirited. Like it's not vengeful. He seems to do it with a a twinkle in his eye and a sense of humor. You know. Well, yeah, that's what he wanted to be. I mean, he's like the comedic Bruce Lee. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, so um, um, what was it like working with him? Oh, it was it was, it was awesome. I mean, he's, you know, they, funny. They, I mean, because because his, obviously, he he's, his whole thing is comedy, so he's very, very funny. And, um, which you know came through in the film, right? 
So that was his first American film, you say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. There you go. I learned something today. I try to learn something every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always easy, but I try. No. <laughs> no. That um, the cheerleaders' wild weekend. Um, Enjoyable. I found the tone was a little off on it, though, because uh, it's kind of advertised like it's going to be like this um, very comedic um, uh, teen comedy. And uh, when you watch it, it's very, very, very dark. Yeah, it's, really? It's advertised as a comedy? That's fun. I guess maybe thinking the trailer kind of has that. Uh, yeah, that's funny, isn't it? No, yeah. yeah. Dark. Not well written, I don't think. Yeah. Because um, with the the villains in the film, um, very very threatening, and uh, when you think Lisa about Williams, he was Flesh Gordon. What's that? One of the villains, the tall blonde haired one, that was Flesh Gordon. Jason Williams. He was one of the producers of Alice. He actually cast me. Alice in Wonderland. He also um, oh. did quite a few films with Kaleidoscope. That was one of them. I'm not sure if Jason wrote that. I'm not. I, I mean, I can't say, but. He um, was Flesh Gordon? Yeah. Oh, I remember I those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, those, those, uh, those are fun. I saw one of those years ago. Years ago. I didn't know that. There were, yeah, and I didn't know there was more than one Flesh Gordon. Hmm. Well, there, there's at least two of them, as far as I know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, hmm. I think I saw the second one. Unless I got my information wrong, but I... I well, yeah, no, I mean, I wouldn't know. So, I mean, I just happen to know that. It's like it's something you read, right? You know, there like you I read go. Things and I remember what I read. Um, yeah, Flesh Gordon <laughs> 1 and then Flesh Gordon 2. There you Flesh go. Flesh Gordon comes home. Well, it was about well, it was about on p- par with Flash Gordon, so there you go. <laughs> right. There you go. That was the joke, right? Yeah. Well, look at well, Sam Jones was in Flash Gordon, and then he's in Ted. So he's best friends. He's, he's marrying off a teddy bear. Oh, he's in Ted. Yeah, he's in Ted. He's playing himself in Ted. Oh, that's funny. In the new Ted. He's in the new Ted as well, but um, I like them best in the old Ted because. Uh, um, they made it a point to to meet him, and he's playing himself, being hopped up on drugs and stuff. And oh yes, yes, I re- I remember that scene, but I guess I didn't know who it was that they were going to. I you know didn't I didn't make the connection. Did you like Ted? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of this humor. It's all become very potty humor. Like you know, I don't know. It I, has. I liked it. It was funny, but it's just. Not my favorite kind of. You think Animal House? I think opened the door for a lot of that. Oh yeah, no, no, of course it did. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's great. It's but it just it's like my one of my favorite films was Young Frankenstein. Oh, that's a fantastic movie. I've got yeah. that home in my collection. I love Young Frankenstein. I think that's Mel Brooks's greatest achievement. Is Young Frankenstein? He shot it in black and white. And, I know, it's yeah. awesome, such a great film. It is. I mean, Blazing Shadows is hilarious. Yeah. Um, so um, what was your... And Ted was funny, too. But... Ted. You, you didn't have a talking teddy bear when you were young? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, the thing is, here's the, here's the difference. If I rate films by what I will spend $13 for and what, you know, it's like a film like that. Am I going to see it? Yes. Like, oh, one of my favorite films that came out of that type or I guess was what's it called hmm it was with Kristen Wiig and she played she had a black eye and it was with these English guys what um oh man I hate when I can't think of something she Paul. had oh Paul the film. Paul okay yeah that was funny yeah Seth Rogen vo- Seth Rogen voicing yeah. an alien <laughs> yes that was hilarious yeah, um, but like, but like, you know, Blades of Glory and all those types of, you know, yeah, no. You weren't a big fan of The Hangover. Um, 
that was funny. <laughs> I hated the sequels. I hate it when they repeat the same thing in a sequel. Right. You know? Well, unfortunately, you know, they make it, you know, however much they make, and they're like, well, let's just do it again. <laughs> there you go. So going back to Cheerleader's Wild Weekend, uh, what what was your experience like on that film? Um, gosh, it's a long time. I mean, I remember being on the set. I mean, I, uh, you know, or, I mean, my experience was it was an acting job. Uh, I went went on set, did my lines, and went home. Is that? Um, but I, 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 I mean, I can't think of an experience, you know what I mean, that was. Um, you did a film with Richard Gere as well? Yep, his first film. Well, I can't, I don't remember the name of that film. It's called Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. You know what's interesting with... about Richard Gere? I went and I saw the second best exotic Marigold Hotel earlier this year. And I sat in the theater, and the moment Richard Gere appears on screen, every woman, especially the older women, are, like, gushing. And I could hear them. It's like <laughs> Richard Gere comes out, and all the women are like, <sighs> You hear this big, giant sigh, right? Like, <sighs> Yeah, it's like, and then, then you go to Magic Mike XXL, and they're all, like, people talk about guys being pervs. I, there's about 95% girls in the Magic Mike, and I'm going to tell you the stuff I heard in that theater. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, yeah, you know, it's like guys are known, supposedly, yeah, 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 but women are just as bad, trust me. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, whether it's Channing Tatum or Richard Gere, you get one of those handsome guys in there, and the women react. I don't get that reaction myself. I, I, <laughs> That's funny. I just saw, I just saw a commercial recently, and it was great. It was like these seventy. I mean, it's weird because I, it's hard to say how old they were. They were older than I. Um, you know, maybe seventy five year old ladies buying a car or something, and the car salesman is cute. I don't. Maybe it was a car com- commercial, and they're, you know, it's all very tongue in cheek, and they're making pie. You know, it was hilarious because they're like flirting with this twenty something, or you know. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so women are just as bad as men, and it doesn't change with age. No. I almost forgot. I got to backtrack a bit um, looking through your filmography. You were in a movie called I Want to Hold Your Hand. Do you have a bit part yeah. in that, did you? Yeah, I had a small part in that, but it was Zemeckis' directorial debut, and Steven Spielberg was the executive producer. He was on set. It was pretty cool. What was it like uh, being in that film? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a great experience because of who I was surrounded by. But the actors, you know, the really talented actors, and um, but but it was you know, it was, I worked a day. I think it was I had a really small part. Of course, I played a hooker. I was it's, cast as hookers. Well, it's like been a long type. Yeah, it's been a long time I, since I've seen it. It's yeah, a, yeah, it hasn't come out on Blu-ray yet. I I remember uh, Nancy Allen having a Fifty Shades of Grey moment with a guitar. Yeah, <laughs> it was such a cute movie. It was so great, and the, you know Nancy was great. They were all Eddie. They were just it was you know it was a it was a fun 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 film. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually trying to get Nancy to, on here. I wanted to do a, a 35th anniversary retrospect on Dress to Kill, and I thought she was so good in that. But um, Yeah, she was. Yeah, you're the only one I've, I've had come on the podcast through um, Twitter because I've talked to you on Twitter. There's a lot of times I go on Facebook, and I hope that um, – I come across um, right. I've only been like I've been reviewing movies since 1996, but I've been here on the radio since '05. But we just got mm-hmm. po- yeah, we just got podcasting here last year, and um, uh-huh. yeah, and what had happened? I actually interviewed one of your co-stars from your what, latest movie, Samurai Cop. Com- Samurai Cop oh, really? Two, yeah. Back in April, Riff Tracks was doing um, their little commentary on a movie called The Room, starring Tommy Wiseau. And uh, my co-host, who um, unfortunately is not here today, because he had 
other engagements, but um, he managed to snag us an interview with Tommy Wiseau back in, in April, and we went on there and we talked about The Room. And Have you ever seen The Room? No. Mm-mm. Oh, <laughs> It's called The Greatest Bad Movie Ever Made, and it's so bad, yet Tommy Wiseau is so engaging, you know, and we had, yeah, yeah, we had him on here, and my co-host and I were just kind of looking at each each other, and it's like, it's Tommy, it's Tommy, you know, and and after we got done the Tommy interview, I was like, who else can I get on here? And I just kind of wanted to interview people from cult films and whatnot. And you're right. you're one of the people I went after, and I went after a lot of people from the horror films, and you know, and I went after. I noticed you. that about Twitter. I mean, somebody said that. I mean, I didn't know before, but someone said, "Oh yeah, that the only reason to be on Twitter is to tweet celebrities or something, tweet two celebrities and." Well, not all. Here's one thing I've noticed on Twitter: people will get on there, and I think it's a self-esteem issue. But people get on there and they'll ask so and so to follow them, and so and so doesn't follow them. It's almost an acceptance thing, you know. Like, uh, right? You know, and I, I like follow, I, I follow everybody. Yeah, like you do that, and uh, Ashley Mazzaro from the WWE, she does that as well. And there's other people that that do that, and I think that's really cool that when people follow. But um, I find Twitter, I find it's an easier way to talk to celebrities, those those that are willing to talk. Like like you and I talk on there quite a bit whenever I'm on there, you know. And um, I love engaging in. Like I I watch Meatballs and I'm like I'm talking to I'm talking to the woman who played Al, you know. Right. And that's a really. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, and it's a real... another thing that's interesting is is that people I've heard actors out here say that. Um, you know, oh well, you want to they when when you're up for a part, they check your social media and how many fans you have. But it's like so silly. It's like it's not really indicative of how many fans you have. I mean, people follow you. Everybody follows everybody on Twitter. It's like oh, they give you those um, you know suggestions for whom you should follow. I mean, I'm being followed by a zillion people that probably don't even know who I am. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah, I find that too. I had somebody throw that in my face too. You know, there, um, I was being criticized. I, I forget what the situation was about, but they said he like I don't even have one hundred followers on there, and somebody brought that up, and I'm like, yeah, well, when uh, Jesus died on the cross, he had even less followers. Yikes! There you go. I mean, even Peter denied him. So there you go. Jeez, that's not even funny. No, it's not funny, but I but, but I was uh, I brought up the point that when they want to talk about popularity in terms of followers, I I, I said that um, I, I said like I said I used the biblical thing as a, a good example, and there's a lot a lot of truth in that. Mm-hmm. But people play that um, social media uh, game and. Uh, I think I was watching, like, I think I was watching The Passion of the Christ uh, not too long be- before that. So I had that in my mind, and that's why I brought that up. Right. So, yeah, I thought that was a great movie. Did you see that? Yes, yes, and to use another religious pun, you know, be careful what you tweet because you could be crucified for that. No. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, I, I was worried going into it because I, I was worried how violent it was going to be. But, man, it was such a well-done movie, you know. And I came from a Christian household, so um, so seeing an R-rated Christian film, it was cool to see it. But I thought it was the lighting and and uh, the fact they shot it in the Hebrew, Hebrew language. I loved it. I, I, I oh yeah, I didn't see that. It's just um, yeah, I didn't. I don't really have an interest. I, it, it, you know, my um, you know, when time, it's like I don't know. I just sometimes I I come to. Um, there are just certain films, you know, there's, like I said, there's certain films that I, I want to see in the theater. There's certain films that I'll wait to come, till they come to um, cable or Netflix. And then certain films that I, you know, I don't really, I mean, something it's like, if I missed it, it's like, oh, wow, it's on television right now. But, I mean, that's not a film that I would probably want to see. Oh, I thought you said you saw The Passion. No, no, no. I was just, um, making it a religious pun, he could be crucified. Oh, okay. I, I missed you on that. But, oh yeah, uh, no, no. 
Yeah. Um, what was the last film you went and saw in theaters? Um, what did I just see? Well, just goes to show you. Hmm. That must be being 60, right? My short-term memory loss. I, um, it was probably a Marvel. <laughs> you go to the Marvel movies? Of course. I love Marvel. Yeah. And, what, yeah. What's and your favorite? Or fantasy adventure. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, I'm a, that's my genre. I'm a fantasy adventure reader. Marvel buff. What's your favorite Marvel movie? Oh, well, Iron Man was pretty kick-ass. Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like the Avengers? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, it gets you out. It's fun. It's campy. It's, um, what was the, the Chris Pratt one? That was pretty good. The anti uh Oh, wow. Um, I can't think of the name of it. That may have been the last one that I saw. What was he in? I'm trying to think. What was he the in? The anti-adventure. Whatever. The, or the... Um, I can't think of it. Whatever. Yeah, and that's going to stump me, too, because I keep thinking Chris Pratt, Jurassic World, Jurassic World, and I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> no, it was before Jurassic World. Yeah. I kind of wanted to go see that, but then I read the reviews. Jurassic World? Or actually, I actually had a friend that went to see it who, whose opinion I trust. And then I was like, well, oh, okay. I'll wait for that to come out on cable. Well, it's interesting because how well, the fact that that thing is doing so well, I'm still predicting the new Star Wars is going to surpass it. Oh, yeah, of course it was. Kidding? Yeah. Star Wars? Yep. <laughs> I saw those yeah. at. I saw those at the drive-in when I was young. We don't have drive-ins here anymore, but boy, I remember those up there in that big drive-in. We still have one here. It's fun. It's oh, great. yeah? They have five screens, yeah. They have a big drive-in in LA. You can go. Oh, well, we, we got one. I think the closest we got is Sussex. Um, we, we lost ours, I think, in the mid-'80s. I don't know why we lost them, and I don't even remember the last movie I saw there, but... My parents used to take my brothers and I to the drive and I know we saw the Star Wars trilogy there too too and that was uh pretty awesome. Yeah, I saw the very first Star Wars at like a nine o'clock show. The Cinerama Dome. Did did, did you ever early, maybe seven. It was early because I you know, I didn't want to wait in line, so I went really early morning. Yeah. It's so amazing. um I'm also a sci fi buff, so what's your favorite sci fi movies? You like Blade Runner? Yeah, I love that, yeah. What do you think of the fact they're making a, a sequel to it? Well, we'll have to wait and see. I hope how, they do it right. Do. I hope they do it yeah. right, you know. But uh like Blade Runner, I like Clockwork Orange. That's classified, I guess, with as sci fi and I like the Star Wars. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. So Samurai Cop two you got coming out. Do you do it uh, do you do any scenes with Tommy Wiseau? Um, who <laughs> I don't know who I I I do uh, I, I'm just the director's a friend of mine. I'm in one scene, two scenes. Oh man, he should put yeah, you in all the part. movie. Yeah, well, yeah, it was he didn't just um yeah just play um the uh, forensics. So which one is Tommy Wiseau? I Good think character. he's listed as a character named Liston or Liston or something like that. No, I just did the my scene was with the guy that the the two the I should know his name. But the black guy that was in it originally. There were the two guys the the, the kind of the samurai guy with the long black hair and then the, the, the police officer. So my scene was with the police officer. Okay. And is this film going? This film obviously is not going to get a wide release, is it? It's going to be. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, uh, you know, I think I think it's kind of sad too because um, um, I enjoyed going over some of your older films and whatnot. You had a very spunky, uplifting spirit to you, you know, and um, um, you kind of bring that into all your roles. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Spunky, yeah. I think so. Yeah, it's very hard to be spunky at 60, but I try. I think you're spunky. 
So what what well, okay. what what gets you up so early in the morning? Um, I'm a morning person. I, I like getting up early. I was out late last night. I have a friend of mine come in from out of town, so I was out clubbing, and um, I don't drink. Oh, yeah. Huh? I, well, I was going to say, yeah, I'm not a big club person. I, we, that that I, I leave that to the young at heart. Well, uh, well we, we go out, we, um, we know the DJs at these clubs and stuff, and we go out and socialize. And so um, I was out late last night, and I get up early this morning, come in to prep for the interview. I said, I, I, I'm going to, I've got a big interview today, and I was looking forward for so long to having you on here to talk. And, uh, I suppose you're getting up early in the mornings, kind of like um, Bill Murray trying to get up early in the morning and meatballs. But I, I think you probably get up faster than he does. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It took him a few minutes. Even if I'm up late, I still kind of jump out of bed pretty early. What time of day do you usually get up? I don't know, six thirty, between six thirty, seven thirty. Um, you're not. Yeah, a... I just. You're not. I, I prefer mornings. I'm a day person, really. You're not a snooze button person, are you? Nope. <laughs> oh, nope. My, my snooze button gets a lot of use from me. No, I jump out of bed and go for a run. Okay. Well, um, is uh, Samurai Cup 2 all, all wrapped up? Is it all done? I think so. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really keep up. I mean, Greg, the director, is... Um, he has a his own distribution company, so he's and you know I saw didn't I post on Twitter they were fundraising to finish the uh, so I, I don't know um, I don't know. You had one on there they were doing a, a fundraiser on. Um, oh, I'm trying to think what the name of the movie was. Um, something compromise is that? Yeah, often compromise. Yeah, I did that movie, but I can't talk about it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, could th- yeah. I think you're in it with uh, Christopher McDonald because uh, I saw some advertisements for it. Yeah, okay, we know we don't have to talk about that, but uh, I know yeah. they were doing something through one of the the. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, Kickstarter. Or yeah, Indie, Indiegogo. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I looked in, into that, but um, yeah, it's in post production right now. It's going to be a terrific film, but you know, um, they want to sort of keep it under wraps until they hit the. Um, the festivals and stuff. Okay, is um is is go is it go be a wide release? Um, I I I I I can't speak to that. I don't I I don't know what's gonna. You know, you never know. I think when you make movies today, it's yeah. You know, it's, if it's not a studio film, if it's a if it's a um, an indie film, then you know you you know you hit the festivals and hope to get you know great word of mouth and then get distribution and then see where it goes from there and then you you, you never know what's going to happen and be, or how it will be um, yeah you know if people will love it so it's all to be determined okay we'll see how it goes but I'm sure I mean it's a the script is funny as shit it's really a f- great it's going to be hopefully yeah it's a really good film well, you you say you grew up in a in a farm. Like, um, how did you go from um, that lifestyle into acting? Like, did you like when you were going to school? Like, were you into Broadway plays or or school plays and stuff like that? Yes, yeah, I was. I um, I, I as I said, I studied voice for many many years, and I uh, did musicals. I was in the my freshman year of high school. I did. I played um, Louisa in The Sound of Music, and then that year, the McHayden Theater, which is now pretty well known in, in the in the Berkshires where I grew up, and um, it's a company that comes up every summer from New York to Chatham, New York, and uh, I auditioned for the same part because I was a kid, obviously, and they thought my voice was much too mature, so they cast me as the naughty postulant. And I was in the company, in that company for four seasons. I, you know, every summer, they, I was, you know, I did, you know, so I did four years, and it was theater in the round, which is pretty cool. 
because it was my first experience with, you know, well, it's not. I had done that stage play, but then, you know, I went from one, st- you know, stage play in high school to doing theater in the round, which is really um, um, a great experience. And then, and then the whole time while I was in high school, I was also modeling in Albany. Um, so I had started modeling because... You know, was, um, I mean, I've said this, I think, in interviews before. It was not really a very popular, you know, back in my day, I call it the, you know, what was popular were the va va voom girls, you know, the curvy, large-breasted. And I was certainly not that. I was very tall, very thin, no breasts. And uh, so that's why I did theater. You know, I was that theater nerd, not the popular. Um, I joke that I try to be a cheerleader and, and back in when I when the teachers picked the um the cheerleaders, which I think is odd now looking back, but I remember going in front of a bunch of the teachers and, you know, jumping up in the air and doing something, you know, athletic and they said, Next Oh really? Because you're yeah. very attractive. I like you know <laughs> Well yeah, I, I don't I don't think I was attractive then. I maybe. I yeah, whatever, I don't know. So anyway, but I mean it's a joke. Okay, so and so but then what happened was, you know, I saw a photograph of Twiggy or you know, in a magazine or something and she was oh, yeah. very tall, thin and I was like, Oh wow, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be modeling when you look like me. So yeah, so I started doing that in Albany. I think also when I was like in my freshman year of high school, a friend of mine just sent me a, a newspaper from a, an Albany Times Union from an ad. The, you know, it, it was a, um, a spread of, you know, Macy's was a big deal. And I think it was like a Macy's modeling program sort of thing. And then, you know, and then I later went into New York and started working with Eileen Mar- Ford and continued, you know, I did the summer stock and yeah, that's sort of how it all began. And uh, what was what was your experience like um, um, modeling? Like what different types of modeling and and whatnot you did? Um, I mean, just the normal. Uh, it's just sort of you know you do um, you see you mean in when I was a kid. I mean it was kind of scary. I mean it was back to the same sort of nerd thing. I would used to have to go to school in curl, curlers because I'd have some photo shoot after school, so you know, it was pretty embarrassing. And then. Um, you know, in New York, it's a, you know, you're running around meeting all the um, photographers and doing photo shoots and taking loads of pictures. And um, I was just sort of at the point where Eileen would have shipped me off to Europe, which is what they do with their new models, to have them go to Europe and continue um, building your book and, and seeing if you can, and you know, work over there. And, but I ended up doing Alice, so that sort of changed that. And then... I ended up in California and started my film career in television. What What was uh, people's reaction to? It was Alice was your first film, right? Yes. What was the reaction you got uh, for that? Um, I, well, I don't know what you mean by reaction. I mean, obviously, I did a lot of publicity for the film. I was on late night talk shows. I um, had a publicist. I dressed in white tails, which is sort of was my signature. Cause I'm, I like dressing like a guy anywhere, anyway. Like I was recently told to, at, by the director, I was going to an event and I, uh, a signing and I said to the director, well, how should I dress? And he said, dress sexy. So I wore a shirt and tie. <laughs> so, but I used to wear, um, uh, white tux tails with tails and, uh, just, you know, traveled all over the country for openings and signings and, yep, did a lot of publicity for that film. Well, you um, grew up in, uh, you were born in the 50s, you grew up in the 60s. What was the 60s like to grow up in? I, I, you know, I I can't speak to that. I mean, you know, the 60s for me were not, wouldn't be like the 60s for somebody else. I mean, I was in a small town in upstate New York. It's not like I grew up in Manhattan and was stealing away to go down to um, some nightclub at 14 or something, you know? Yeah, that, the thing is with me, like, I, I watch it. I love a lot of movies from the 50s and 60s, and 
sometimes it'll just kind of occur to me like, um, you know, I, I was not even heard of, you know, when this all this stuff was being done in this film and whatnot. And it's, it's um, kind of overwhelming to me. So, um, like, uh, people. Oh, yeah, like watching movies about and t- television shows about what it was like. It was like, wow, it was amazing. But what was going on? Um, in, I mean, it was a revolution. But, but I didn't have, you know, very much. I didn't have any experience with it myself personally. You weren't involved in like. Well, I guess maybe making Alice, I was a part of that, you know? There you go. Well, uh, well, yeah. Who knew? Uh, yeah, that that came up there in the yeah, in the seventies, and uh, yeah, no, though I um, like you hear about all the stories about the sixties and Woodstock and whatnot. So I, that's one one of the things I was inquiring about was whether you um, um, was hearing about all of that stuff or whether you were just. Um, just uh, back in the background. I, I don't think I'm getting my words right here, but not paying attention to it. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, kind of like growing up in a bubble, right? I mean, what, I mean obviously paying attention to the news and what's happening and to the space program and, you know, stuff like that. I was very interested in space and aliens and still am. And, but, um, but other than that, you know, like what was hip, you know, when you grew up in the country, you're very far removed from all that besides, and I, I wasn't a person who read, you know, celeb, you know, little, if they even had them back then, you know, I, mean, I just, I think I just kept, you know, understood what was going on by the news, not by, um, and, all right, well. You, um, you... I've, I've lost track of the question. <laughs> yeah, I probably did do uh, my apologies, but you mentioned, no you mentioned, you know, um, sci-fi and stuff. Uh, was that those your favorite type of movies growing up? Um, I don't know. I think I, I think that, um, I, uh, I'm not sure about movies, but that's what I read. Right. I read a lot of sci- sci-fi. I was, I used to read through genres, right? And and I read you know, through genres, and then um, when I would find an author that I like, I would read everything that they they wrote, so or try to, you know. But I don't know. My dad was like, you know, I'm I'm like this Star Trekker. I'm a Trekkie. My dad was a sci-fi buff, and so Friday nights we'd all sit down and watch Star Trek, and that was like our favorite night of the week. And and I still, I mean, I've watched the went on to. The next, the next generation. You know, I think I might not have gone on to the ones that came after that. But um, you enjoy the movies of Star Trek? Yep, see, I've seen them. Yep, I haven't seen all of them, but I've I've reviewed a few of them, and I've I've always liked them. Um, I think I've been more a Star Wars person than Star Trek, but I certainly have a lot of respect for Star Trek. In fact, yeah. um, I, I find it funny because uh, George Decay goes on the Howard Stern show a lot, and um, he's a very uh, uplifting fellow. I, I like listening to him do interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just got distracted by my kitten. You get a kitty? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've got a cat. He just... Um, he just got into a fight a few a few days ago. As uh, he was limping on one paw, but I think oh, well, he's... that's why I'm not letting mine outside. There are coyotes here too, so coyotes. She's, like, jumping. she's hanging on the screen. I think there there are actually photographs online of that of cats hanging on screens. And she really wants to go outside and eat birds or something, but I'm not. Uh, she's still a little tiny for that. You guys. Um, where you you live now? Do you live in a city now, or do you still live out in the country now? Well, I I live um, outside of Los Angeles. I um I live up in the yeah, sort of like in the country. Uh, yeah, exactly outside of L.A. Yeah. And you you get you get do you see coyotes up around there? Oh yeah, skunk coyotes. Yeah. Oh uh, skunks, you you know they're around. You don't have to see them to know they're around. Nothing stops a car faster than a skunk. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, uh, skunks are great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was coming home one night and uh, a skunk crossed uh, um, across my driveway, and I stopped my car and I had my brights on, and all I could see was his tail sticking up in the air in the ditch. And I'm like, I'm not going to move until you move. And I could see the tail waving. And then finally the tail goes down. The skunk pops his head up. I think he was wondering what I was doing. And then he wanders across the road and off into the bushes. He, t- he took the road. Yeah, he retreated. That's so funny. I, um, I had a farm back east when I, I um, raised my kids back east. I thought it would be good to raise them on a farm. I was raised on a farm. So um, I uh, bought a thoroughbred farm and uh, raised my guy on a farm, and we we had a Nikita, and he used to, uh, you know, most dogs when they find a skunk, you know, they run the other way. He would eat them. He ingested it. So we used to joke that he would break wind. We had the summer of skunk once. There was an entire family that he um, <laughs> destroyed, <laughs> but he'd break wind and it would smell like skunk in the house. Yeah. Oh. I gave man. him a lot of baths that summer. Do you, is it true that tomato juice works for that? Because I've never been mm. sprayed, so. Yeah, I don't know. Our dog's been sprayed I'm sure a couple I was times. I trying everything, including tomato juice and things from the vet, and nothing really worked. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we don't have too many coyotes like around here. I know that they've been spotted. I've seen them maybe once. Yeah, we have... Um, Opossum too here, pretty cool. Back east as well. We don't have possum they, here. Yeah, they pretend to be dead. It's so cool. Now but is it? Wake tr- up! We know you're kidding. Yeah. Well, is it true the rumors that possums hang by their tail in trees, or is that just a rumor? I I, I couldn't say. I've never seen one do it. They come out at night. Oh. And I've only seen them, you know, at night. I haven't seen them hanging for, from a tree. I don't know. We don't. But have, I bet you, you can go. You can Google it. Probably. I. I I'm. Uh, I don't know whether this is going to float your boat, but I'm more a snake person. <laughs> oh, I like snakes. I love snakes. Obviously, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, on my Twitter picture, um, I think my background photo is. You'll see that I've uh, got a big uh, Burmese python draped over my shoulder. So. Okay, well, I don't, yeah, have that, but I used to, you know, have garden, garden, garden snakes sunning themselves, and they're, I'd pick them up and move them from the hedge. Kind of cute. Do you got rattlers up where you are? Um, I've, I've heard. I haven't um, in, encountered one myself, but I have heard that they are around here. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't have any poisonous snakes here where I am. We just get the, you know, garter snakes, but. Yeah, I don't think we got pretty much anything other than the odd black bear wandering in. We don't, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much about it. No. Do you do you um, know bear safety? Uh, no. Why? <laughs> no, no. I just was. I had a friend who um, had uh, a bear come out of a wood pile, and they were <laughs> quickly. Googling what to do if you see a bear. This is like a whole bear safety. Uh, um, yeah, it's totally funny. Well, we, I've seen a black bear once driving home, but we, I don't really see them. I know in Moncton a couple of years ago, there's a woman that was attacked by one, but you don't hear those very often. Same with coyotes. You hear the odd attack, but um, um, like, we don't get get a lot of that here. Like, um, I think the probably the most vicious thing that I worry about here is driving home at night and deer wandering out in front of the car because uh, they're all over the right. road coming home. Yeah, yeah and that's just ex- that's just expensive. Well, I, I've I've been pulled over twice by cops because I've been driving too slow. Now, all I have to do is mention the deer. They, they're in like community areas. I've had them hit me twice just in community areas. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere in state New York as well. They're everywhere. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so what do you got up and coming for uh, new movies? Um, what do I have up and coming? Hmm. I have something. 
but I can't talk about that either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is like Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't, you know, I don't want to say something if it doesn't, you know, I don't know for sure. No, no. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, you're on my Twitter page, yeah. obviously. And, you know, so if when something happens, then I'll instantly put it up. But I can't right, say anything now. No, but, I don't. I don't want you to get in trouble. Well, it's not about getting in trouble. It's just, you know, I um, it's just a little too soon. Okay. Maybe to, uh, yeah. But as soon as I can, I'll let you know. So uh, of all your films, uh, what's your favorite? Meatballs. Meatballs. Meatballs is special yeah. for everybody. When you went and did the um, the the charity thing in uh, Toronto a few years ago, um, how was the turnout for that? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was good. I mean, I, I don't think they got as many people as they wanted to get that were involved. They had a lot of the crew was there as well. Um, a few, a couple actors, producers, some of the crew, but. Um, yeah, I mean, so the theater it was, it was pretty. It was pretty good, I think. I, I don't know from the on the nonprofit side if they, you know, you know if they had a, you know a number of what they wanted to make or how much they wanted to raise. I, I don't know. I, I don't have the numbers, but but it was really not. It was awesome. Yeah, um, I would have loved to have gone, but like I said, I never get out of here. Like. A, I, I work at it like I volunteer here at the station, so I get a job where if I leave, it's hard to replace me. So um, I've never been to Toronto or Ontario. Like I just I've never been outside New Brunswick. So have you ever come down this way before? No. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Most people don't even know we're on the map. <laughs> right. Exactly. I have seen seen the name New Brunswick, New Brunswick, but um, I couldn't say. I've definitely never been there. No, about as far as I've been is Moncton. I, I saw Avril Lavigne in concert in Moncton, and uh, I suppose. And it's interesting because um, I was out really, really late, and it took like uh, two hours to drive back home. And I went on like two hours of sleep and still get up for work the next morning. I'll tell you, my my boss loved me. <laughs> But I was right. I was just dead. But um, I was in the mosh pit and got some good pictures. So, um, so Woo-hoo. yeah. But it, but between Moncton and Saint John, Moncton's mosh pit was very aggressive. I didn't like that. Saint John, I was able to move around with a uh, without any any co- uh, any trouble. But um, it was um, pretty tense. And uh, when you're in a mosh pit. Yeah, my... I don't think that's any place I'd ever want to be. Yeah, but um, but I outside yeah. that, like I said, I saw Hillary Duff and St. John too. But other than that, I don't get out of Fredericton very often. The only reason I went to Hillary Duff is because I had back page, backstage passes, so <laughs> so that made that that's made the funny. yeah that that's my Twitter picture. Um. So I I kind of have to um, I have an appointment. Yep, so I'm I about ready to, to. Uh, yeah, I'm about ready to close off. I got one last question though. Okay. Um, where could I go yeah, to get an autograph picture of you? Where can you go to get an autograph picture? Um, well, I say to most people, you can contact me on my um, Facebook or Twitter fan pages. Um, I mean, uh, that or show up at a signing, which, you know, I never know where they're going to be, and they're obviously not everywhere. But you can certainly, um, thinking that it's you or whomever, but, you know, I mean, you obviously can have one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Contact me on Twitter. But normally, now that I do signings, I I charge 25 for um, a regular autograph, and then 20 if it's multiple more than one uh for um and then for a nude it's 40 um because there are a few of those out there um which people want to have autographed and i also have a um then yeah i then there's a process by which that happens i have a p.o box and there you go okay i'll have to talk to you on twitter about that and you know um 
converse with you about that. You know, it, it's been real. Huh? I I, 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 now that you've interviewed me, there, there'll be no charge here for your photo. <laughs> oh, I don't mind and paying which, for and it. And which movie would you want a photo of? Would it be Meatballs? Oh, man. Probably Meatballs, yeah. Yeah. I would, All right. Yeah, probably Meatballs, you know. And which scene in Meatballs? Would it be the opening scene? Would it be the scene with 14-year-old girls? Or would it be the scene with wheels? Oh, I don't know. Anything that's got a well, shot you of have a lot to think about. This. Anything that's got a shot of your gorgeous face, I'm fine with. <laughs> You're perfectly happy with it. <laughs> By the way, Harvey Aiken. Yeah, your Harvey Aiken when he's floating out on the water there at the end of the Harvey film. Was Harvey was at the reunion. I have a theory. Do you think that maybe it was him and not an iceberg that hit the Titanic and sank it? Yeah, no, I, I don't think that. I don't think that. that uh, no, <laughs> it was not. Yeah, no. I could just picture Harvey floating out there in the boat, seeing him asleep on the water. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. That that was a great running joke. Yeah, it was a great. I mean, the whole, the whole, the entire, you know, the the progression, all the jokes with Harvey were great. Yeah. Well, Christine, I, I hope my – I'm very much an amateur when it comes to interviewing, and uh, I, I hope this interview was um, uh, sufficient for you. It's been an honor for me to talk to you. and, and um, Well, thank you. No, it was great fun. It really was. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for wanting to interview me. Oh, I, you know what? I so badly – like after we interviewed Tommy Wiseau, like, I was looking at my co-host and I said – there's so many people I'd like to do this with now that I know that I can do it. And you were the first people I thought of. And, and I, I really, really, really wanted to interview you. And, um, and you know, I've been a fan of yours for a very, very long time. And, uh, actually the people here at the station are excited about this. Like my, uh, volunteer coordinator, like she thought was respond back. She said, cool news. Like she thought it was great that, uh, I was going to have you. She knew who you was. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Do you get recognized a lot? No, 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 no. I used to. I mean, I think maybe back in when, so when I was like in my 40s, if I wore a ponytail, um, or you know what I mean, because that's how I wore my hair and meatballs, right? People would say, wait a minute, weren't you? But yeah, not so much now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like no, it's a, been a long time. I, I when was I last recognized? I don't know about ten years ago, maybe in Williamstown, Massachusetts, and the guy was like, "What you in meatballs?" And I was like, "Yeah, forty years ago, dude." But I know I'm just eating. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know what? I I I hope that you enjoyed this interview. Like I said, I'm very I'm I'm very much an amateur at this, you know, but. Um, I've I've uh, tried to keep out of personal questions and kept it with the movies. I'm I'm like the guy that shows up at the video store, like my station manager, and he used to work at a video store, and I go there and talk his ears off about movies, and he said it would make the time go past. So I wanted you oh, to come okay. on and that's awesome. Yeah, and I thought I'd have you go on and talk about your movies and about your passions and. Um, and I'm really, really happy that you came on. It was it's such a, a pleasure and honor to talk to you. Well, and what's that? Thank you for having me. Thank y- you for having me. It yes, was great talking to you too, Greg. Yes, and um, I'll keep conversing with you on Twitter, and we'll okay. see about getting that um, autograph floating. And uh, I thank you for coming on here, and God bless, and I hope you have a great day. You too. You too, Greg. It was fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.